Hey guys. Well, today um, I had wanted to do this video outside, more of a bushcrafty type video, but I've done something similar. Um, what I'm going to do right now out in the woods. So I mean, you can definitely take everything here and go out in the woods and do it. It's just time kind of got away from me this weekend. It's Sunday, and I I just want to get it done. Um, I don't want to be a slave to a fire outside all day. So what I'm going to do today is, you guys, if you saw my video from uh, well, earlier this week, I, uh, I trapped a beaver. And a lot of people have been telling me that it's pretty good, pretty good meat. And actually, if you research it on the internet, there's actually quite a few recipes out there. Um, my wife is on vacation right now. She's out in California. She's visiting some uh, good family friends out there. And uh, those friends are French. The guy and the, and the lady are French. And they're both really good cooks. So uh, the guy um, gave me a marinade recipe and I'm going to show you what was involved in marinating it. I marinated it overnight, uh, this beaver meat, and I've got a couple different ways I'm going to cook it up. Now I kind of messed up because I wanted to try the meat without any, just plain, with, uh, without anything except for maybe some basic spices, but I marinated it all. So, you know, I kind of wanted to just get the, you know, every type of meat has its own particular flavor and I wanted to experience that particular flavor with this beaver, but uh, anyway, I marinated it all. And evidently my dog doesn't like that. So anyway, all right, let me get reset up and I'll, I'll show you what the marinated consisted of. Okay guys, so all I did last night is I minced up some garlic and used a bottle of this, just whatever, it's just uh, red wine. Um, I try to look for just the cheapest stuff possible, you know, but it's just a just give it a little bit of flavor Anyway, I'm thinking that the reason this guy gave me this recipe and told me how to do it like this is because he thinks this is going to be pretty gamey But you know, this would definitely be good for venison or anything like that for sure But he told me to put the venison in there or I'm sorry put the meat in there uh, Put the wine in there. I've got the garlic and I've got various uh, spices that I'll show you here in just a minute and he told me that the next day, after it's marinated overnight, is I should drain it. Which, the reason I'm thinking, like I said, that he's expecting me or wants me to drain it is because maybe he thinks this is going to be pretty gamey. If this was venison or something like that, I'd throw all this juice right in the crock pot. I'm going to be using a crock pot for this. Um, like I said, you could, you could use your bush pot. You guys have seen me do that. I just don't want to be a slave to the fire all day. Now one thing about this is with this garlic and stuff on here, I'm going to want to make sure that none of that's on the meat because I don't want it. I'm going to use a pretty high heat to sear this meat and I don't want to take the chance of burning the garlic because burnt garlic is pretty nasty. So I'm going to get this all cleaned up get the garlic off it and start cutting it into bite-sized pieces. This is the hind quarters and the back straps of the beaver. I could rinse it but I want I want at least some of the juices and stuff still on it. Okay, you've probably, you know, obviously we're going to be making this in the crock pot and stuff, but I'm also going to barbecue some of it up too. I'm going to make shish kebabs. So I'll take just the, I don't have as many shish kebabs as I thought I did. And actually these are chopsticks that I just uh, carved a point on. But anyway, nice piece of grass in there. Um, I'm going to soak these up so that when they go on the barbecue, they don't just all burn up like firewood. Okay, so... When I processed this beaver down, I made sure and got rid of as much silver skin and fat as I could. That's a good tip for venison. Venison fat tastes horrible. Um, this beaver fat, I'm not sure. I, I've, never, I've never had it before. Bear fat's not too bad. But uh, if you don't want your animal to taste you know, super gamey or whatever, it's a good idea to I mean, clean it up as, as good as you can. So, anyway, that needs to be thrown away.
Okay, so I'm just going to start cutting some of it into, into bite-sized pieces. That's going to be that stuff I'm putting in the bowl right there. It's going to be for the stew. This is a fatty meat, you can tell because when I pulled it out of the the bag and stuff, you could just you just feel the fat on it. So it is a little bit fatty meat. I'm gonna treat this beaver kind of like how you would treat uh, chicken. In other words, um, I want to be very careful with um, cross contamination and stuff like that. Venison, my venison, I don't really worry about it too much. I mean, obviously, I want to be you know pretty careful but I don't have to go to the extremes like I do with chicken and stuff like that. Um, and I'm, I love my venison on the, not rare, but definitely not cooked all the way through. I mean, there's definitely some pink in the middle. Um, that's not gonna be the case with this beaver. I'm gonna make sure and cook him really good. So that's a back strap. We're gonna barbecue those. That might be part of a back strap, but that's all right. There's the other back strap. Okay, I'm gonna cut these up into bite-sized chunks and I'll get back with you. Okay, so there's all the, the hind quarters cut up into nice bite-sized chunks. I'm gonna start the, the stove here. And uh, in case you guys are wondering, this is a razor back from Justin Wolf. He just started making knives, Grier Wolf on YouTube. And this is only the second knife he's ever made. Um, I'll do a review on this after I've used this a lot more. I use this to, to uh, process the beaver, to skin it out and everything. And so far so good. It throws sparks awesome from a ferro rod. Uh, anyway, Joe Mobley did a review on his, ferro woodcraft. And mine is a little thicker than what he's making them out of now. But anyway, all right, let's get to cooking. Okay, in my crock pot, I have some water heating up right now just to kind of get a little head start on it. It's about four cups of water I have in there, and I can see if I need more in a little bit. Just got some olive oil in the pan, and I'm just going to sear, sear up the meat. I should have waited until that was a little hotter. But we'll pour the heat to it right now. I don't necessarily need to, I don't need to cook it all the way, I just need to brown it. And I wanted it really hot, I should have got it really hot. I'm gonna use a little more Old Bay on it. This stuff I got in New Orleans, it's called uh, Slap Your Mama. A little bit of garlic salt, not too much. I gotta be careful, this one's got um, a white opening on it. other stuff's got salt in it too, so I don't want to make it too salty. And some pepper. And like I said, I should have made this hotter, really hot when I put it in there. I kind of messed that up. Alright, I'm just going to brown this and I'll get back with you. Okay, I shouldn't have had so much olive oil in there either because it uh, definitely didn't do what I thought it was going to do. But anyway, add this to my crock pot.
Okay, when I did this out in the woods with my bush pot, I did a lot better job with um, sa with uh, sautéing the uh, or browning the venison. Um, you saw what was <laughs> what happened there. It didn't exactly do what I wanted to do. This is the juice left over from the meat um, after I got done cooking it. And the gentleman that, that told me about the marinade, he told me I should saute the vegetables in it as well. Well, I'm only gonna put the potatoes in it. I'll give that a try. I'm only gonna put the potatoes in it because I like to add my vegetables in my stew as it cooks, because uh, some of the vegetables will cook faster than others. Like I don't really wanna put my onions and stuff in there quite yet. But I've never sauteed my vegetables like this. Never tried that. I'll See what happens here. All right, well, I'm just gonna saute these up a little bit, just kind of brown them, I guess, and see what that does. See if I can get some sort of caramelization on the potatoes or something before I put them in the crock pot. Probably too many potatoes. I'll save the rest for some time. Put them in a bowl. All right, now if I'd have done this right with the meat, there would have been some burnt on Stuff, not really burnt, but browned on stuff on the pan. And Lorraine, thank you for this. And I'm just going to try and deglaze it with this wine. It's really hot, it sh I, I hope, anyway. I'm going to try to get some of this brown stuff. Should have been a little hotter. Dump that in there. All right. Now I'm just going to start prepping some of my other vegetables. Okay, I'm going to prep my other vegetables. And I don't know how many people really do it like this, but I don't like, I, I want to just go into the kitchen basically once and do all my prep and then I'll put these vegetables back in the refrigerator. If it's a type of vegetable, like even if it was a potato or something and got a little bit brown, I don't really care, um, especially in a stew. I just want to process all these vegetables and then I can add them whenever I want to. So I'm just going to make the carrots into Probably a little more bite-sized pieces, probably something like that. Now I can do that with all these carrots and uh, put them in a bowl for later. I'll do my onion, all that stuff. One thing I am going to do is I've had this lime in the refrigerator for quite a while. And I think I'm going to squeeze it and put it in the crock pot. Okay, I just put the carrots in one bowl and the onions and garlic in a different bowl. Uh, that way I can just grab the carrots. These will be the next thing to go in. So, all right, now I'm going to start prepping for the shish kebabs. Okay, guys, I just started the barbecue and I'm just waiting, to, waiting for it to die down to coals, a charcoal barbecue. So while I'm waiting for that, I want to go back over the marinade because I totally messed it up and did not give you all the ingredients. Okay, first of all, <clears throat> a small bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon wine, some minced up garlic, a little bit of olive oil, just a splash of vinegar. I put my spices in there like you saw. I got the Old Bay, the garlic salt, the black pepper, and the Slap Your Mama spice. And then um, I actually had We've had those two limes in there for quite a while and I wanted to figure out a way to use them up. 
So I took a lime last night and added that to the marinade as well. So that's the marinade. Um, if doing all this to your game doesn't make it taste good, you might as well not, not even hunt it or process it. I cannot imagine that this stew isn't going to be delicious. Um, it's going to taste like roast beef, like venison, like whatever. It basically, I've had a few different types of game animals like this and you can't tell one from the other. I mean, it just tastes like real good meat. And like I was saying before, I wish I wouldn't have marinated this, uh, these kebabs or whatever that I'm going to do. But still, um, I think it'll give it a little, I'll still be able to taste kind of what the meat's all about, I hope. Um, I wasn't, I don't think I'm going to be able to make shish kebabs with it just because um, I don't have enough shish kebabs. So I'm going to, I'm going to readjust the camera and I'll kind of show you what I've got going on here for the vegetables. The shish kebabs will be for the meat only. Okay guys, when I decided to go ahead and make a meal out of this stuff, uh, this Bieber or whatever, I didn't especially go to the store and buy a whole bunch of special ingredients or whatever. I did have my daughter buy the potatoes and the carrots because we didn't have any of that. But as far as like these shish kebabs and stuff, I had some onions in the refrigerator, so I just grabbed some of those. I had a little clump of broccoli left over, so I grabbed that. The potatoes that you see in here are the ones that I just did a little too many for the stew. And then um, I threw an apple in there too. I don't know if you guys have ever had like an apple on the barbecue. It tastes pretty good. So this is how I like to do my vegetables on the barbecue. If I'm not doing it on a shish kebab or whatever, I'll take some olive oil and I'll try to drizzle it so that at least everything gets a little coating of olive oil. And it's got, I'm only using the bottom pan just to catch all this excess oil. I have a tendency to oil things down pretty good, but it's olive oil so it doesn't really, it's not a big deal. Then I've got some uh, coarse sea salt. I love this stuff. Okay, and that's it. That's how I'm gonna barbecue them. Um, if the potatoes don't get 100% done, you know, that's all right. Maybe I'll have to nuke them or something. But this is gonna cook for a while because I want that beaver, uh, I'll probably put the beaver on first, but uh, I want this to cook for um, the beaver. I want the beaver to cook so it's really, really done. And the reason I left everything kind of so big was because I probably am gonna put it on the same time as the beaver and then everything will be done at the same time. So anyway, there you go. Barbecue's almost ready. In case you're wondering what I did with the rest of them, because I quartered them, uh, the beaver, I took the front quarters and actually I saved them um, for trapping. It's supposed to be real good bait for trapping. So that's where the front quarters went. Okay guys, you probably can't see too good right now because I got quite the fire going on there. But uh, what I did is I just took some random uh, pieces of oak firewood, uh, just scraps that were on the ground from me processing wood for my house, and I threw them into the barbecue. So I want that to, I want it to burn down a little bit so it's more coals than anything. But um, that'll help add a little bit of smoke. So I'm going to, in just a minute, I'm gonna cover it back, I'm gonna cover the barbecue up and try and really lower the temperature down to get this to start smoking instead of a raging bonfire like it is right now. Uh, just real quick, a word of caution, if you do this, be real careful. You see all this smoke coming up, that's basically unburned fuel, you know, that's fuel vapor. So if you take the lid off of this and you're not ready for it, Okay, that time it didn't do it as bad, but anyway. All right, cool. So, this is what we got cooking right now. Adjust my vents a little bit, and I'm gonna check it in about six minutes or so.
Okay, here we go. Now six minutes on each side for these little kebabs is quite a bit. But I want to make sure it's really good and cooked. I'm not sure what kind of parasites these little suckers have. And of course I, I washed my pan. But I'm going to take these in and if they're even the slightest bit pink in the middle, they're coming right back out again. And I'll probably leave my veggies on here just to... Oh boy, they look good. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to pull them off too. Alright, see you inside. Oops, looks pretty well cooked to me. Grab one of these bigger pieces. I don't know, it looks pretty cooked to me. I don't see any... It's going to be a little bit drier because there's not a ton of juices. I cooked the hell out of it. But the juices, I don't see any red juices or anything like that. That's a pretty good cut of meat right there. Cassidy, come try this. Okay, Cass, give it a try. Okay guys, I added the carrots a while ago. Um, they seem to be pretty tender and I just kind of lost track of time. But anyway, I just put the, the uh, onions and garlic in there. It, uh, that's a full stew right there. That smells pretty good. So, another hour or so, she'll be ready. Okay, well here we go. I think it's been cooking long enough. Got a different smell to it, but a lot of uh, wild meats and stuff definitely have their own particular odors. We've gotten so far away from our roots and our past and stuff that this kind of stuff seems weird, but I mean people have been eating this kind of stuff for probably thousands of years, I mean probably even longer than that actually. And now we think it's only normal to eat like pig and you know pork and chicken and beef and that's it. You know, but there's nothing wrong with this stuff. All right, let me. All right, let's take a look at that there real quick. So that's a pretty good looking stew right there. Jeez, Louis, sorry guys. I got a ladle in my hand. <laughs> All right. Put the lid back on it. 
And sorry for the sniffles, guys. I've been dealing with, dealing with a cold again. Potatoes are cooked. Carrots are cooked. And I had checked the meat earlier. I just wanted to make double sure, you know. But these are bite-sized pieces. This thing's been cooking for at least five hours. So, I mean, that's plenty of time. Look at that. The meat's just falling apart. I defy you to taste the difference between beef and this. No way. Mmm. Mmm. There's a little something there, but I'm not sure if it's because of the wine. The wine mar mar marinade. You know, I can taste a little something in there, but... It's not a bad taste at all. It's just a little bit different, and that's what I think. I've never had meat marinated in wine before, so I think that's what I'm tasting, but it's certainly not a bad taste. It's just a different taste, and it's, uh, yeah, this is good. Also, when I said that when I felt in the bag, you know, when I was first taking the meat out of the marinade, and I could feel my hands, and I kind of felt like I said, well, this is a fatty meat. It wasn't fatty when I was butchering it. And I think looking back on it, what I was feeling was the olive oil that I had added to the marinade because I don't remember feeling that you can feel a fatty meat like a bear or something like that when you're butchering it or when you're handling it. It will feel, you know, your hands will feel kind of greasy and stuff like that, but it did not feel that way when I deboned it. And it was only when I took it out of the marinade. And like I said, looking back on that, I think that's probably um, just the olive oil. Oh yeah. Huh. And yeah, I got a big bite there. That's totally the wine that I'm tasting. And like I said, it's not bad, it's just different. I've never had meat marinated with wine. Wow. Hell yeah, I'll eat that all day long. Taking it for lunch actually tomorrow. Okay guys, well I know this is a little bit different than my normal videos. This is, you know, in my kitchen and stuff. But uh I just really wanted to try this, you know, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people, especially from other parts of the country, like down south and stuff like that, are really used to meats like this, like raccoon, or just people that are, you know, into bushcrafting and stuff like that and survival and stuff. They're, they're used to beaver and raccoon and, you know, just a lot of different animals that, that we're not used to. I mean, for me, even eating squirrel, a lot of the guys around me look look at me like I'm nuts, and that, and that's you know it's a good meat. There's nothing wrong with it at all. This beaver is really good. I mean, it's it. I saved the front quarters and stuff like that for trapping, and I saved when I was um, cleaning it and and stuff the fat stuff like that. I saved for trapping, but I mean this is this is a, a good meat now. Certainly not all wild animals are going to be good. Like I know that I, when I trapped my weasel last year, I think it was last year, actually it was two years ago, it smelled really bad. So, I mean, if you were starving to death, you'd eat it. But it's not something I really want to bring into my kitchen. I mean, it just smelled real musky. It just smelled nasty. This meat didn't smell. I mean, I can smell him when I'm out there um, setting my traps, but I can also smell deer. All these animals just have, they just have different odors to them. I mean, a cow's got an odor to them. A horse has an odor to them. They're just, it's just different, you know? So, I mean, I'm really glad and really happy that I was able to harvest this guy and, and, and try it out. This is, I'm just, I'm really tickled pink about this and my daughter loved it and I wish she would have been able to stay here long enough for the stew, but she had to go back to college. But anyway, enough rambling. Thanks a lot for watching the video and, and I hope you liked it.